Hello, I'm Lucy Russell. I'm a York graduate, uh, graduated um, a great many years ago, um, and I settled on York um, as a student because I welcomed the diversity of the course and um, I have to say that York really set me up for life in that um, I ended up joining the Fitzwilliam Quartet um, in my MA year and I also um, had an epiphany moment um, when I heard a Baroque violin for the very first time in my first term and I loved the sound of the Baroque violin absolutely instantly and it's been um, a very major part of my life and my teaching ever since. Um, I teach at the university, I work with um, MA and PhD students and um, during this third lockdown now and for the period of about the last year or so, um, I have to say that my students have kept me sane and I hope I've helped them too. Um, actually attending to their needs as uh, developing musicians and uh, sharing their worries and frustrations has uh, enabled a sense of community which is very important to us all. Um, at York I also a co-director of the Baroque Ensemble and I'm very happy that we've managed to keep a thread of activity throughout the, the past year um, and continue to do so during this third lockdown. Um, we're very expectant to perform again, hopefully in June, if we're permitted to do so. And we have a thriving community um, of players um, who turn up every Thursday afternoon for uh, two and a half hours to work with myself and Rachel Gray. And that keeps us going, keeps us busy. Um, so... Yes, whilst lockdowns have been somewhat uh, soul-destroying because they affect your motivation, I've been very busy with my teaching outside of York as well and um, also set up an organisation called Inside Out Musician, which is an online um, programme of classes and teaching. Um, and we have um, a Kaylee every month, which involves... Uh, you can turn up and, and play for three minutes, you can share, there are breakout rooms, there's a, a, again a, an array of different types of music and poetry, um, lots to enjoy of an evening and the development of this also kept me personally focused as one of a team of five, uh, so thank goodness for that. Um, I've also been flexing my muscles just doing various bits of recording, but nothing quite as uh, challenging as producing uh, the music for this little enterprise. I was absolutely delighted to be asked to do this um, as one of the uh, York um, teachers. Um, and um, yes, it's been quite a challenge for me to be both record producer, uh, sound engineer and performer. So, um, and the fact that you can't edit anything, of course, means that you are in dialogue with the part of you that says that wasn't perfect. So I've just had to let some of that go, like I'm sure we've all had to. And the sound of my lovely music room upstairs is also not ideal. So I hope that um, there'll be a little bit of bloom added to it um, afterwards. So, um, yes, I'm going to share with you a little program which are called Fantasia because essentially everything I'm playing is a fantasy or um, influenced by that form and um, I'm going to start off with a Telemann Fantasia number one. I'm playing two of these, number 12 at the very end. These were composed in 1735. Um, Telemann was uh, very excited by this form and he wrote uh, 12 for the violin, 12 for the flute, um, and also viola de gamba, and I think about 36 for harpsichord. So it was some, it was a form he he welcomed and was inspired by. This particular fantasia is in three movements: uh, largo, allegro, uh, and a grave with a repeat of the allegro at the very end. So I shall begin with that and then I shall um, guide you along the way and I hope that you will enjoy it.
The earliest piece I'm playing in this short programme is by the young Nicola Mateus, who was born in Naples and travelled to London in the 1670s, bringing with him an entirely different style of playing. Uh, likened to the brilliant Corelli, um, he introduced um, a, a, a more flowing and more virtuosic style of violin playing, which replaced what had been understood to be a rather um, stuck form of, of dances, which the, the, the British were adhering to before people like him came over from um, the other parts of Europe. I just want to read a little quote, a couple of quotes, um, one by Roger North, um, which um, says, As a grateful legacy to the English nation, left with them a general favour for the Italian manner of harmony, and after him the French was wholly laid aside, and nothing in town had a relish without a spice of Italy. So that gives you an idea about... Uh, changing uh, ideas around taste and um, literally taste being a bit more spicy um, and more, I suppose, this piece that I'm going to play, um, which is, a, is a, another fantasia, is deeply uh, melancholic and, and searching and quite dark, which I think in some ways befits my state of mind sometimes during these lockdowns. So I've had a lot of um, pleasure actually digging deep with it. I want to just say uh, one more thing, another quote, which this is the Steelers Fantastica style, which is a style which is entirely free um, and nobody says it better quite than uh, Matheson, who was an 18th century musicologist and composer. Just briefly, for this style is the most free and unrestrained manner of composing, singing and playing. Now swift, now hesitating, now in one voice, now in many voices, now for a while behind the beat, without measure of sound, but not without the intent to please, to overtake and to astonish. I love that quote. And I think that... Um, I think it sort of reflects what's going on in, in this little piece that I'm about to play for you, Fantasia con discrezione, um, and here it is.
So for the next piece in this program, um, I'm going to be playing an instrument that's not professionally associated with me, which is the Hardanger violin, this here. Um, I've always been attracted to the music and traditions of Norway. I do have a bit of Norwegian blood. And um, in fact, in my final year as a student at York, I premiered a concerto by Alfred Janssen, British premier, um, of, a, of a concerto which was uh, based on Hardanger traditions, which basically meant there's a lot of double stopping. Just to tell you a little bit about this instrument, it's the national instrument of Norway. And this, you can see from it that we have a very nice dragon head for the scroll. And there are four strings on the top and there are four sympathetic strings, a very flat bridge, which means that double stops are de rigueur and um, lots of mother of pearl inlay around here. This is a fiddle dating from about 1913. Um, and so um, I finally got hold of one of these instruments um, because I just love the sound world of them. We have different, it's a scordatura transposition instrument. So there's lots, there's 20 different possibilities for tunings. Uh, the piece that I'm going to play is based on this, which is A, D, A, D at the top. And there's sympathetic strings, you get that underneath, which are all um, in, in harmony with this at the top. So why lots of different tunings? Well, essentially, a um, simple answer to that was that invariably these instruments be used to accompany a wedding procession or a funeral and outdoors and would chime in with the, the church bells, they'd be in tune with those. And so they've, they've always um, been adaptable in terms of their pitch. And that of course gives lots of possibilities for um, different timbres. Um, so the, it's, I've had um, a, a number of sessions learning how to play this instrument over the years and it's a very, um, it's quite a complex sound world and uh, uh, quite hard to memorize because there's no, you don't use notation, you just sit around in a circle in a group and actually just repeat a phrase over and over and over again until you've got it into your system, which as a classically trained musician has always been quite a struggle for me, I'm ashamed to say. During this lockdown, I've actually um, tried to get myself off the written page and have been doing again via my Inside Out Musician team, we've been doing a lot of improvisation, which I found uh, enormously helpful. And even for my Baroque playing, especially for my Baroque playing, because it helps with ornamentation and the freedom of all of that. So I think it now needs to be something that becomes part of a, a normal instrumental syllabus is to look into um, getting off the page. So um, this little piece, which in fact, I, I actually wrote myself, is inspired by a beautiful poem written probably about 100 years ago by a Norwegian poet, poet um, called Olaf Hauger. And I just want to read it to you before you actually hear the um, piece that I wrote for it. It's the, the poem is called, It's the Dream. It's the dream we carry in secret that something miraculous will happen that it must happen, that time will open, that the heart will open, that doors will open, that the mountains will open, that springs will gush, that the dream will open, that one morning we will glide into some little harbour we didn't know was there. <laughs>
So to conclude this programme, here is Telemann's 12th Fantasia in A minor. It's in three movements. It has a uh, moderato, vivace and presto. Um, this particular piece I find to be quite folky. Um, there's a kind of droney bagpipe thing going on in the second movement and there's kind of a, a an ecstatic leaping kind of figure um, dancey in the presto which I think just uh, lifts the spirits and I hope that will do so for you. But before I go I just want you to seriously consider making a contribution to this concert series and and to help by doing so the ongoing work of this university and um, investing in the lives of our students who matter to us enormously. Um, any amount will make a difference so please do press that donate button now and I hope very much that we'll all be able to see each other again before too long and to share music in the flesh once more. Keep well.